Hi guys, it's R James again. Welcome back to my video. Previously on part 1, I gave you tips and advices when it comes to characterization, conceptualizing, anatomy, sketching, and simple line art. Welcome to my part 2 where I teach you guys how to do coloring and shading using the Sugimori style artwork. If you haven't seen my part 1 video, feel free to watch that first before proceeding to this video. From our previous video, we actually finished Karen's line art where I actually gave her a redesign. And for this part, we will proceed and color her. Before anything else, I would also like to share my layer setup. For simple Sugimori style artworks, I only have 8 layers in total, starting from the bottom going to the top. These layers include the sketch layer, which is a normal layer, the silhouette layer, another normal layer, black colors, normal layer, shade A, turned into multiply layer, shade B, another multiply layer, highlights is an overlay, Small detail layers is a normal layer and of course the line work layer. As simple as that, with only 8 workable layers, we can produce our Pikmin trainer. First, we go to the silhouette layer. Using the magic wand tool, choose line work layer and click on the negative space of your artwork. Negative space is typically the background where you want it to be transparent later on. Once the negative space turns purple, we head on to the selection drop down and click invert. This will automatically cover the silhouette of your artwork. Using dark gray color, you can manually color it with any flat brush or you can click Ctrl F to quickly fill the whole selection. That's it for the silhouette layer. Moving on to the next layer, we have the flat colors layer. This is the layer where we actually color the character's skin, hair, clothing, and accessories. Here's a really good tip. If you have an idea on what your trainer's skin tone would look like, I highly suggest color picking the tone from an already existing official character. Go to Google and just Google any official Pokemon trainers. For instance, I chose the original Karen's artwork to color pick her original colors palette. Just copy the image, go back to Paint Tool Sci, click the File drop down menu, and choose Create from Clipboard. This will automatically open the image you copied on Google to a new canvas. From here, you can simply color pick their hair and skin, but don't color pick the part where there's a shading or a highlight. Just click the part where you think is the base color. You can go ahead and manually color it or you can use my previous technique combination. Magic Wand plus Ctrl F to fill in the parts quickly. Now that we have established the artwork with its flat colors, it's time for us to do some shading. The layer on top of the flat color should be transformed into a multiply layer. You can do this by clicking the mode drop down menu and simply choosing multiply. Multiply mode multiplies the color of the blending layer and the flat colors layer, resulting in a darker color. This mode is useful for coloring shadows. It's also very important to clip these layers on top of the flat colors layer so that any shading you apply won't go over the line. Here's what happens when you don't clip your layer. Using a light gray color, or leaning towards a more brown for warmer tone, shade the part where you think the shadows will be placed. It's okay to be a bit sloppy or messy when doing this, because Sugimori style shading does not use blending. It uses the eraser tool. That's right folks, Sugimori Artworks shading edges are done via the eraser tool and does not involve blending. Here are my recommended settings for your eraser tool. 0.20 and density set low to 45. Just run your eraser tool on the edge of your shadow and this will create the classic Sugimori style shading. Do this until you are satisfied. Again, don't use blurred tool or any blending tools to shade if you are trying to achieve the classic Sugimori style shading. 
Moving on to the next layer, it's another multiply layer, but this time, use a darker gray color, leaning towards a light purple tone. Don't go overboard on this shading part and only shade the parts where you think light will not reflect. Parts of this include back of the hair, armpits, neck or jawline. It will still depend on the pose and anatomy of your trainer. Proceed with shading and clean up using the eraser tool as usual. Next layer is the highlight. For this layer, you should change the mode to overlay and choose a neutral gray color. Color the parts where you consider the high point. Also, for the hair to give it the shiny effect look. Once completed, proceed with the eraser cleanup and continue until satisfied. For the last layer, we will just use a normal layer. This layer only involves the following, eye details and small white strokes. For the eye details, it only uses one black dot and one white dot. And we have already achieved the Sugimori style eye. The small white strokes are very minor details that you can place on top of the hair, highlights, the shoes, and accessories. And there we have it! Eight layers of simple tricks, and we have come up with our official looking Sugimori style Pikmin trainers. Once finished, make sure to save it as a PNG file to make the background transparent. And there we have it! We finished parts 1 and part 2, but there are more tips and tricks I'll be giving you on my following videos. On my next video, I will be giving you a deeper guidelines on how the face, hair, and eyes differs from one character to another using the Sugimori style artwork. What do you think of this tutorial? I would really love to see all your takes, all your drawings, all your Pikmin creations, and I would really appreciate it if you tag me on your social media for me to see it. If you guys ever did tag me, there's a high chance that I'll give you constructive criticism on how to improve your artworks. See you on my next video. Again, this is RJames. Have fun drawing. Bye!